Alrighty guys, welcome back to another episode here from the Back to Beta server, where as you can see, between episodes, we are standing in the cleared out area, the finished cleared out area of, uh, of where our base is going to be, which is very cool. This took me a long time to do. We, uh, yeah did a couple streams on it and uh, yeah mined out a bunch and then obviously had to place the sand on the ground as well and uh, yeah it's obviously not quite finished um, I do kind of need to remove these these walls here and here and then this back wall as well I, I just kind of need to start flattening it out there but this does give us our initial kind of space to start working on our uh, our, our base our base project um, so yeah, very happy with this. This has taken a long time, um, but we still have a lot more to go, so yeah. But in today's episode, we are making our way to the last block's base, which is just down this corridor here. Because we are going to help him with a project at his base here, and there it is, up there. Um, this place has really come along. He is absolutely grinding the, the heck out of it. I don't know how much his, his spoilers or not, but... He's got a pickaxe over here, he's got this nice tree over here, he's building towers everywhere. This place is insane. He is just so good with detail and just making a world look will look good. He's good at like the sight lines and look at this, look at this path. Just look at a curve. Very nice, very cool. Um, but here is what we're going to be working on today for him. Um, this is his clock tower, which um, has nothing inside it and I want to try and make it have some sort of functionality. Now. Obviously, in beta, we're quite limited to how um, how complex we can we can make a, a system work. But I think we can make something at least a little functional, just to just to provide a bit of interest, you know, just to just to you know have a little bit of movement in the world. It doesn't have to be much. It's not meant to be eye catching, um, you know, necessarily. But it'll be a little bit of movement in the world. Okay, so here we are at the top of the tower. As you can see, we've got very nice views from up here. I must say. Very nice views indeed. Um, we do have all the resources we need for this project in here that I've painstakingly collected, especially this wool, nine stacks of wool. Oh, took me a while. Um, and that's literally just for aesthetics. But yeah, we're going to build in this space here. We're going to be uh, working out this machine. And uh, yeah, we will see how this thing turns out. Okay, but the first thing I want to do is build up the white framing that is going to make up the uh, the face of the clock and that's going to use all of this wool here plus a little bit of this black wool actually which we're going to need and uh, yeah this is going to create the faces of the clocks and uh, yeah we're just going to get started by just placing it in here and this is what we're going to use to uh, yeah make the backdrop for what we need to uh, need to make here Okay, but the next thing we want to do is go on the outside of these and we want to find sort of each spot where we want to face a hand, uh, well we want the, I don't know, I guess the numbers kind of to be, and we also want to find the center block which is going to be slightly annoying but it should be fine, I just need to line up where these meet up, right, so if I just go like this, like that, and then it should be just this one, like that, and we'll just place an obsidian block there just to make it look good. And then, uh, and then, yeah, we just place these in here like this, uh, like that. Okay, and then we've got to get rid of this dirt. Like that. Okay, there we go. That's our pretty good clock face there. Now it just needs some hands, which we will get to once I finish that. Okay, so this is what we're looking at right now in terms of what the clock kind of looks like. Um, I've never actually seen it on the full structure. The white might clash. If he doesn't like the white wool or the black wool or whatever, he can change, he can change the aesthetics of that. That's not the important part. The important part is now what we're going to work on. 
That being the redstone part of the machine. So we're going to grab our sticky pistons first. And we need some kind of a block to kind of indicate a central point. Let's just use wood. Yeah, that'll be fine. Um, so where is the central point? And we need to place sticky pistons kind of all inside on the insides of, the, of these walls. Which is going to be a little bit of a pain now that I've placed this white wall, but it's fine. Um, so I think that central block will be about there, right? I think that's about right. And we can use that to, uh, to build our, uh, yeah, there it is, good. We can use that to build our sticky pistons off, which I will show you what that means in a moment, because you probably don't understand what I'm trying to say. Okay, so our pistons are now in place. These are going to be responsible for the arms and the arm movements in the final result. So now it's time we actually start adding some redstone to the situation. Let's just cover that up. And uh, to do that, we first need to um, extend out the back here. And I'm going to kind of, kind of color code what I'm doing so that we can, uh, at the end, actually have a, a decent idea of what everything kind of looks like and what everything... Well, sort of how everything contributes to the uh, to the system. So yeah, this is how we're kind of going to build um, this bottom layer. We're going to start by um, sort of extending all the bottom the bottom row of pistons because we want all faces of the clock to be showing the th the same thing. So we're going to start by extending all the bottom row of pistons. Um, then we'll do the top row, and then we'll do the the side rows um, sort of last. Um, so yeah, we're going to make this system here, uh, and we're going to make it so that we have redstone on top like that. We have a repeater uh, running into a block here like that. And then we can power that later. So that's going to be fine. Okay, so this is the first section done. This is just about the bottom layer of pistons here on all four sides. Um, let me explain to you kind of what's going on if you don't... Um, if you're unsure. So uh, right now we've got this redstone torch powering everything that's going on. Um, so this redstone torch powers this redstone dust powering the repeater which powers this block um, which simultaneously powers this redstone dust and this redstone stone dust to turn off these two torches. And now when these two to torches are off uh, the pistons retract. So right now all of the pistons as you can see are retracted. So now when I unpower everything by removing this torch you can hear all the pistons extend because these torches are no longer um, turning off because the redstone dust isn't turning them off. So now all of the pistons are extended and we're going to use this to our advantage um, for sort of timing of latest of the, um, I guess, overall contraption. And we're going to pretty much build this exact same setup here um, above to do the exact same thing for the uh, top layer of pistons as well. Okay, and that's the second section done, pretty much exactly the same as the first, color-coded so that we can kind of tell the difference between the top and the bottom ones. Now we're going to work on the arms, which we will color-code with, I guess, netherrack and dirt, or maybe this wool. I don't know, I didn't bring a, another, another set of blocks, but at least one will be netherrack, maybe one will be dirt. Okay, so now we've got all of the major redstone components in, and I know it looks a little confusing, and that's partly because of the block choices I guess I've used, but if you think about it this way, the uh, the top layer, the cobblestone, is for the top layer of, uh, of pistons here, the netherrack is for the left arm, the dirt is for the right arm, and then the sandstone is for the bottom arm. So it's all quite simple, and it's all very much kind of the same thing, and it'll all be controlled by a sort of central, uh, I don't know, central hub at the top, which will kind of power itself by alternating five minute timers, which I'll show you in a sec. So the last part of this puzzle are the five minute timers, which I have put up here. Um, now these have dispensers, which will be full of items, which, um, when you power this, it, uh, yeah, it makes a sound and, uh, that will put an item on top of a pressure plate here, which will then power a red, well, turn off a redstone torch, which will then control whether these are turned on or off, these, uh, these central, uh, 
systems here, and both of these control the uh, the arms as well, so they're going to work in unison. And the cool thing about these is we can have these alternate, so when this one has an item inside, this one won't have an item inside, and then as soon as this one despawns, it will activate this one to turn on and uh, and dispense an item. So these are going to just alternate forever unless there's uh, there's there are no items in the dispensers. So yeah, it's pretty foolproof and it should work pretty well. So we're just going to connect all this up, and uh, yeah, it'll all be working. Okay, now in the final touch, we need to start the system off. And to do that, we'll just chuck in... Let's just chuck in a redstone torch. Okay, so now the system is started. So that torch is down there. That's going to despawn in five minutes. We're going to put some bone meal into here. So that when uh, it comes back around to this dispenser, it'll uh, have something to, to dispense. And we can put that there. Very good. And now over to this side, we will also put our bone meal into here. Okay, we were briefly having some issues there, but I have got it solved. Um, it was just an issue with the redstone line that was coming along here, was powering this dispenser like a second time, which didn't make any sense. It was through thin air, but that's just a quirk of beta, I guess. So I just had to move it. But the system is entirely done. So right now, uh, I think this one must have an item in it, which means, yep, this arm the top arm and the right arm are extended yep there we go and then if we come over here and we remove the item inside here like that everything gets powered there's now an item inside there on a pressure plate starting a five minute timer which then also puts the uh the arrows down and to the left um, and yeah just pretty much just controls everything in here so every five minutes um once an item despawns it alternates between these two here, so we should be good, um, and this this should be done. Yeah, okay, I just put a second item in there, but yeah, we should be good now. Okay, so just a final kind of quick explanation. We have got these color coded, so you can kind of see where everything kind of connects to. So this one goes to the cobblestone and the netherrack, where pretty much if an item, which right now an item is on top of that pressure plate, turning this redstone torch off, and that goes down this this redstone line here just down like this, down here, and then it c connects up with all of these uh, these lines here, which all power the pistons. So because that redstone torch is off, which means this redstone line is off, all of these are off, which means the torches can turn on. If the uh, Well, once the item despawns, that torch will turn on, powering this redstone line, which will come all the way up and power these redstone torches to turn off, which would close the... Uh, close the pistons. That's the same on all four sides. Um, now, in terms of the netherrack, I've actually just used um, the fact that this uh, repeater is powering this block to both power this redstone dust and this redstone dust, but it also powers this redstone dust, which you can barely see on top of the netherrack here, um, which then goes into a redstone torch powering this line here. So again, if that torch was turned on, it would power this line, power this repeater, which would turn, like, pretty much, essentially put power into this block, turning off that redstone torch, turning on this line, and turning this redstone torch off, which would turn this line off, and close those pistons. So, that's kind of the idea there, and now if we go over to this one, it's the same principle, ah, <coughs> I fell, same principle, this redstone torch is on, because there's no item on the pressure plate, it comes down this redstone line, which is turned on, um, which meets up with the, uh, this dirt, um, this dirt one here, which is the the or the left hand um, thing, um, and yeah, it comes down to these bottom ones here, which uh, yeah power all the uh, the bottom pistons, same as the top ones, and uh, the dirt kind of just comes off these lines to power the rest of the arms. So it's all very simple, all very straightforward, um, and yeah, I hope that explanation was uh, was quite helpful. We also, I almost forgot, also it's getting dark, that's slightly annoying, I also almost forgot, um, the way the items kind of switch between is same from the torch, so pretty much this is turned off, which means this redstone line here is turned off, which we will have a look at. Um, so right now there's an item on top of this block, which means this redstone torch is turned off, which means this line here is turned off. As soon as that item despawns, um, that torch is going to turn on, which is firstly going to power all the pistons closed, but is also going to power this redstone line to activate this dispenser to drop an item onto uh, a pressure plate here, which would then turn off this uh, torch um, and turn off the line 
to this dispenser here. So yeah, it pretty much just alternates. Every five minutes it'll alternate and uh, yeah, it'll pretty much forever work, which is ideal. And there we go, we just watched it change there. This is what it looks like from down below. Very good, very good. And uh, yeah, you'd think that the, uh, that the lines wouldn't stick out as well because of the background, but it actually does look quite good in my opinion. Um, and yeah, it was quite a smooth transition. So yeah, I hope the last walk enjoys this. He can change the background all he wants. Um, I'll let him know about that. Um, and yeah, he's got a roof to add to it. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like and uh, let me know in the comments what you thought of the clock tower, if there's any improvements I can make or anything like that. And uh, yeah, hope Last Walk enjoys this tower. He is on vacation right now, so we're uh, not able to, to show it off to him just yet. But uh, we will when he gets back, I'll show it off to him and, and, and explain it to him if he wants an explanation. But uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, leave a like and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one. Laters!